you. So um, for everyone else who is joining us via Facebook Live, hello, good morning from Singapore. And we are having real life lessons again today. Um, those of you who are not so familiar with real life lessons, it's our monthly, well, every month we do it for about two weeks where we actually do a lot of education sessions. Most of the time, you're going to have people coming in, leaders, users, sharing about products. Um, but what I also always enjoy is bringing in guests who are actually not from our team, but here to share with us different things. So sometimes they come in here sharing with us about product users, and sometimes we have them coming in sharing about business. So today, we have someone that is very dear to me. Uh, finally, somebody not from a different time zone, and we always go like, are you on the correct time? Usually when we have the US, the Canada guests, we are always guessing if we're getting the correct timing and if they're going to come in um, into the Zoom and not miss this. So we have today Joanne Khan from Hong Kong. So I'm very, very sure many of you would have heard of Joanne's name, seen her picture somewhere, um, heard some stories about her. And on the Facebook, we've given you her very professional bio. I'll just love to just introduce you to Joanne from the, the eyes that I see her from, okay? So we call each other Silver Sisters because we were actually in the same silver trip together. And that's actually something very, very precious to us and to the very small group. Back then, I think it's like 30 people, is it? In the silver retreat. So nowadays it's like thousands and thousands, right? So back then, silver retreat was really tiny. So I had the chance to meet Joanne on the silver retreat. And it was super fun because it was also one of those trips where Gary was on, he took us rafting and as a small group, um, even until today, we have a Facebook group. The Silver Sisters are still there every now and then. Um, folks will actually talk to each other still. It's so nice to keep those connections. And you know, it's like, I, I remember Joanne after that, where the, the, phrase that comes into my head is she just kind of like exploded <laughs> like she just became so in love with everything about young living and about learning from Gary so I would always see her somewhere where Gary is okay and if Gary is in Singapore she's in Singapore she's always there um, to learn and to really just be with this person, the founder of the company, to really gain as much knowledge as possible. So being the first Asian-born Royal Crown Diamond, I am really, really glad that she came in. She was willing to come in here to share with us. And, you know, I was talking to Joanne about this. And one of the things that I would love for her to talk about, like my guess is like Singapore and Hong Kong, we're very similar in terms of our culture and kind of like social economical structure. Is this whole thing about how do you build in a, in a country or in a community that is actually looked upon as mature? So a lot of times I hear <coughs> our builders come in, tell me, oh, Number one, Singapore is very saturated. So they always say, saturated, saturated. I can't build any business here. And number two, we'll hear that people would, uh, would not be very hungry about the business. And so it's hard to find builders in these markets. So Joy has built a really successful team in Hong Kong. And I think her team has also branched out into many other parts of the world. So I thought that it would be really cool that we kind of like scope in today's topic on this and just hear Joanne's stories um, and insights on how she really gets her team to actually build. So we're going to pass the mic over to Joanne. All yours, you have next one hour to take us through your life, your stories and your adventures. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Kai. Thank you. And thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very excited. Hi, everybody. Very, very excited. It's funny to hear somebody describe me because Kai's right. After the Silver Retreat, 
I just went crazy. I just could not get enough of Gary. So wherever he was, people would see me around. It's just like I was a groupie. Uh, I would be in Singapore. If he was in Malaysia, I'd be there. If he was in Croatia, I'd be there. If he was in Winter Harvest, I'd be there. It, it was insane. And um, so, all right. I actually, Kai told me the idea of what she wanted to, to me to talk about. I did not prepare anything because I remember she said, I just want something that's really authentic, really ad hoc, okay? And so much so that I actually have people putting up scaffolding right now. Can you guys hear me? Is it okay? Okay, there's no like noisy drilling sound in the back. We did hear it a little bit just now, but you're still okay. loud enough, yeah. Okay, all right, good. I'm so sorry, this is how it is. All right, okay, so we I started um, in a pretty, affluent um, community, sharing young living, actually the expat community, because that's where my kids were going to school. They went to international school. I nearly all, a lot of the people that I hang around with are expats. So people who are not from Hong Kong, from Europe, from US or UK. And they were very open to um, what I was introducing to them. I think the first thing was because I had built a relationship with them. I think that's like the first most important thing, right? Gary always talked about how this is not actually not an MLM company, it's an MRM company, it's a multi-relationship company. And I have um, uh, learned that you can't tell somebody that this is a good product with your logical mind, if that helps. You gotta share, we always talk about sharing stories, right? You got to share your own experience because when you're talking about your own experience, you have the sparkle in your eye, you're sharing from your heart, you're not trying to introduce products, you're not doing a presentation, uh, which actually never works. Um, if you're trying to tell them that, well, this bottle of clarity is going to help you, you know, full of you know, your blood with oxygen, it's going to help your brain be smarter, it doesn't actually work because once they hear that, they forget about it as soon as they turn around right? What I have actually learned through all these years that I've been building Young Living is that Mary always liked to say that people don't remember what you tell them, but they remember how you make them feel, right? So when we're sharing our story, when we're sharing our experience, we are sharing from our heart and science tells us that the vibration of the heart is so much more strong so much stronger than the vibration of our brain, right? It's like 10 times or something, look it up. Uh, I found the study. And so when we're sharing from our heart, the other person can empathetically feel how we're feeling. And when they feel how they're feeling, they will remember how you make them feel. And so you can either, if you're talking to somebody you don't know, you can do that to build rapport or you already have previous rapport, right? So for me and for a lot of the people that I've seen who are successful in this business, was they already had a network of people who trusted them. It could be, there are people who are bloggers. Okay, so none of us are actually bloggers. And I actually don't believe that you can successfully create a blog because of Young Living and then try to make it happen. But whereas if you already have a network of people who trust you, who would talk about, ask you where you would go to get ice cream, where you would go to get your hair dryer. And that's who I was, you know, who, that's who I am. And I see that people who have that circle of influence can influence their friends, can influence the network. It's not about building the business. I think that comes later. I think uh, we all know that if you're looking to earn quick money, young living is not the right place. And we have tried to attract people with money, with the business to come to Young Living. They will work very hard for the first year and then they realize the money that actually isn't a lot. With the same amount of, honestly, with the same amount of effort, if you're working another MLM, you're probably gonna earn a lot more within the first year. But the difference is, is it gonna be sustainable, right? And in our business, sustainability is, the magic to success is not how many people you can sign up, right? So, and I think um, Kai wanted me to share a bit about 
uh, people who are more mature, like in the market that are more mature. So let me give you a number. As mature as people think Hong Kong is, and we've, we opened back in 2013, so we've been open for what, eight, eight, nine, eight years, uh, we have about 70,000 members. So this is how I do my math, right? Um, we have 7 million people in Hong Kong. So out of 100 people, there are one member in every 100 people. And out of, that's 1%. That's nothing. Okay, so let's say you have one member, each household, there are four people in each household, okay? And with each person in each household, there are four people, and they have a center of influence of four extra people. Say, because we do, and I'm sure in Singapore, you also have a lot of people who are not members, but they've used the products. So say, for example, I have bought products for four other people who are not members and who are not interested in being members, but would want to try the products or consistently buying for me. Okay, that's not a big percentage, but I have about four of those. I've signed out about 100 to 200 people in my young living lifetime. So out of those four people, oh, those 100, 200 people, about four or five of them, they don't want to join member, but they want to buy the products. Okay. Um, so if you have four people in each family, so their center of influence is 16. So if you divide 7 mil, 700, so 7 million is like 700. We call it 700, right? You divide 7 million with, are you still with me? 70,000 times 16. You're still with me, right? That's about, say, so that's about 100,000 100, 100, 100, people. So that's still what? Every 70 people, there are one person who have used it. You still have, you're still talking about 10% only. So I would like you guys to find out about how many members Young Living Singapore has, and including Malaysia probably, because you guys are really close, you know? And then divide the number of people, the population, and find out your rate of people who have used Young Living and find out that number. And I can guarantee you it's under 10%. So don't tell me your market is saturated. If your market is saturated, you've got 90% being members already, all right? And there isn't. So I, you, nobody can convince me that market is saturated. Maybe your circle is saturated. That's about it, right? So you go out and you extend your network. How do you do that? You join yoga groups, you join hobby groups, find something that you love and you go out and you join a group or you go on a Facebook group about air fryers, you know, you go on a, a, a drawing class, something that you love. And while now that we're all locked down and staying at home, I'm sure there are loads of classes that you can take online in Zoom, like everybody's moving everything online, right? Go, go, go to an online forum, go to a Facebook group about whatever. But please do not and never, the first comment is trying to sell people stuff. Don't, because that will only create a negative impression on the company and on you. And with that, when you do that, you're actually cutting out all of your potential networking. You're cutting out all of your potential friends, all of the people who may potentially like you, okay? That's red flag number one, please do not do that. But why do you wanna get into the network? because you want to gather with people who are like-minded, because you want to gather with people who also like air fryers, because you want to gather with people who also like yoga. And that's how we make friends. Because look, with all the people that you have known in your entire life, everybody, every one of them had a connection with you. There was a common ground. There could be one common ground where you met, you may be even in the same grocery store, you were talking to them in line, right? Well, it doesn't really happen in Asia, but it happens a lot in the US. In Asia, usually you're in the same class or you're in the play same play group, or you have about the same age kids or whatever, right? Find that connection, that one, one point of connection with the people that you've met and also with the people that your future meets. And then develop a relationship, ask questions about them, care about them. And that's who we are. I think most of us who are in Young Living who wants to build 
really honestly care about other people. I have yet met one Young Living builder who do not care about other people. I haven't met anybody like that. Um, sometimes they may look as if they're very aggressive or they may look at as if they just want to do this for the money, but they also want to spread the money to other people because they know how important money is. It's also because they care, okay? And um, so do that, open up your network and develop relationship and ask questions while you develop a relationship because most people um, like to talk about themselves, but most people aren't interested in listening to other people talk about themselves. So we need to learn to listen and we need to learn to ask questions. So we can start with asking, so what do you do? Why are you in this class? What actually, other than this, what else do you do in your spare time? Uh, what do you do for a living? Do you have kids? Um, do you like to cook? I don't know, ask questions about their occupation. So this is what, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line, right? Form is ask questions about their family, ask questions about their occupation, ask questions about what they do recreationally, and then show them that you care, message, right? That's a good way to remember what kind of questions to ask. And after asking, learn to listen, learn to shut up and listen and take notes, okay? We, most people listen to answer. We gotta train ourselves to listen, to listen, okay? To listen, to care. So, and then you build your relationship. And if you are a walking billboard of Young Living, which you should be, while you're talking to them, you will be taking out your oils and using them on yourself. And please do not give it to them and start talking about the oils, please do not. You are showing them that Young Living is part of your life and you're part of Young Living. And if they ask questions, then you share. If they don't ask questions, keep your mouth shut about Young Living. And I actually have a rule for everybody who builds that I'm teaching to build. I have a rule that you are not allowed to talk about Young Living for the first three times you meet a new person. You're not allowed to. Even if they ask, you only answer that one question and go back to your conversation. Even if you're doing reconnection with your team, with people that have, I don't know, drop out of ER, or people that you have signed up but haven't seen in a long time, or old friends that you haven't signed up and you're planning to sign them up, do not talk about Young Living for the first three times you see them, no matter how much you want to, okay? And really, that is really, really important because that's how people dislike Young Living. That's how people feel that you're trying to sell them. And that's how you start going like, okay, next time when Joanne calls, they've got to say, oh my God, Joanne's calling. She must want to talk about Young Living. Or they'll pick up the phone and they go, hi, Joanne, so what is it? What is it on sale now? And you don't want that. You don't want your relationship to build on because you want them to sign you up, sign up with Young Living, right? That's not who you want to be. You want to be the person that she thinks about when she has a problem. You want to be the person that she thinks about when she needs help. You want to be the person that she knows you're going to be there for them, okay? That's how we build relationship, whether it's in an affluent city, in an affluent, whether people have money, whether people who don't have money, this is how we build relationship sustainably. And this is how we let them feel that we care. We let them know that we care. And then while we are building that relationship, we show them that young living is in, in my life, is part of my life. So I was just talking to two builders last night and they're quite, you know, they're quite successful. And I was asking them, so how do they build a relationship? What have you done? What do you talk about? And they told me in details. And I said, after I listened to them talk and they were talking about this new, new person in their team and they're both feeling like, well, this person really, she really, she really trusts me. She really, really, you know, know that I'm gonna be there. But there's one problem. She got the starter kit, but never opened it. And, I, and that's when I started asking, so how did you, how did you go about you know, connecting with her and building this, rela this relationship with this new person? And she talked about it and they told me, and I go, wait, after they're done, I said, there's something missing here. I haven't heard you talk about or show them how Young Living is a part of your life. So this is what I said. I said, so this is you. And this is Young Living, this is Young Living, and this is that person. You're connecting with them, but the connection here is lost because you and Young Living are two separate entities. 
you need to put Young Living in that entity. And when they connect with you, they connect with Young Living also. And I think that's what happens to a lot of people when they go out and make a new network. That's what's missing. So they do manage to sign up a lot of new people, but those people aren't sustainable. They're buying it because they trust them. They're not buying because they, they know that Young Living can help them. There is a difference. There's a very, very fine line. And I think that's what we need to really focus about is how people can connect you with Young Living, right? And I mean, I think, I don't know any of you, but I think with me and Kai, when we go out with people because of how often I use the products, um, people will already know that, wow, you really use a lot of products. You really put Young Living in your life, right? Like, so I've signed up so many people because I went on a trip with them and they see that like you're taking, you're, so, okay, so this is how I do it. I look back to all the photos when I was building my business, all of them, I had my phone in my hands and I had oils on the table, all of them, all of them. And the oils are all opened. Usually they're like two or three bottles. And because when I sit down and eat with somebody, I take out my lemon and I put it in water. And then I take out my essential. I don't know if you guys have essential sign four. We just launched essential sign four in Hong Kong. I always take out my essential sign four and I take it. And after I take out a product, I don't put it back into my bag. I just left, I just leave it on the table. And I don't talk about it unless they ask. And usually people would because people are curious. They ask, what's that? And I say, oh, it's just lemon oil. Why, why are you putting it in your water? So, oh, because it's going to help me like refresh my gut and it's going to help me stay healthy. Really? I said, yeah, would you like to try? If they don't ask, I won't ask. I won't let them try. And then afterwards, I'd ask for a cup of hot water and I'd put my peppermint in it. I don't say anything, but the oil speaks for itself, right? Within 30 seconds, the air is filled with peppermint and everybody's going to be like, wow, that smells really good. What, what, what is it? I said, oh, it's just peppermint oil. Huh? You drink it? I said, yeah. You know, one drop of peppermint oil is like 90 bags of organic peppermint tea bags. So one drop will really help my digestion. And they're like, really? Wow, 19? Really? I said, yeah. They're very concentrated. Would you like to try? Maybe they'll say no. But when I get my second cup of hot water, I will ask them again, hey, would you like to try now? They would go, oh, okay. If they say no, then it's fine. I'll just leave the bottle on the table. If they say yes, I'll put it in and I'll tell them, hey, you know what? Don't drink it that. You wait until it's mostly dissipated. Otherwise it's gonna be very bitter, right? So if they continue to ask, I'll continue to talk a little bit about it, but maximum, I usually try to limit myself to three sentences. Otherwise I would go on and on and they would feel like, oh my God, she's like crazy, right? And so I have to remind myself. So awareness is really important. And so eventually, if you see your friends often, and then there's another thing is, I was talking about it last night, is that every time before I go in to meet anybody, whether it's lunch or pick up my kids from school or go into a meeting, whatever, I always pull out my, back then when I was building like aggressively, I always pull out my highest potential and my stress away or magnify a purpose. And before I enter any space, I would tell myself, okay, I'm gonna be meeting with these people or being like at school, you know, won't be meeting with people, but there'll be people around. And I would set an intention of, okay, I will be able to give them whatever they need through sharing young living with them. It could be health, it could be money, it could be abundance, it could be whatever they need. And if it's a meeting, if it's like a lunch, I will tell myself that, okay, I'm entering this space and I'm a vehicle for the universe to bring them young living into their lives. I don't know what it's going to be, but at the end of this meeting, I will, we will both find out what it is. And then I go in. And so even now, I think everybody can smell me before I enter a space. But back then, everybody's like, okay, when I smell this, I know Joanne is around. So it becomes a signature and it becomes part of who I am, right? And obviously you have to be okay with it. Like if you feel like, oh my God, but the oil smells so bad and I don't want people to feel it. And honestly, choose wisely. Don't put Rodevala on, right? Choose something that is nice, like stress away, joy. I don't know, white Angelica, my friends used to love it. So I would put, have a great day. So I put like harmony, joy, uh, white Angelica on and enter a space. And they're like, oh my God, wow, you smell amazing. 
And if you put thieves, I'm not sure if everybody know everybody likes it. And please do not put Imu power unless you're going into an Indian community, right? But still, you smell just like food, so you won't stand out. But put something on that most people like, okay? Um, even lavender plus peppermint and lemon smells amazing. So anyway, so that's how I build my network and how I build my rapport with my friends. And it's regardless of whether they're affluent or whether they, they're in a, like a very humble background, right? Okay, so this is how you build network and how you sign people up. Um, also, another thing is make sure that you follow up with people because I always use this analogy is that, okay, what would you rather sign up 10 people a month and have nobody buy the next month? Or would you rather sign up two people this month and have them buy for the rest of the 12 months, right? You obviously you'd rather sign up two people, make sure that they continue to use the products and benefit from the products for the next 12 months. However, I noticed that in this business because of that's how this industry is in the MLM business is about signing people up. They don't focus on the retention. And that's what happens to a lot of people. You go out and meet new people and you sign them up and you think, yay, that's a win. No, that's not a win. That's the beginning of a win. You're only winning if, they re if you can retain them, if they're on ER, if they're consistently using the products, if they're consistently benefiting from the products, not only using them, because using them does not mean that you're benefiting. It's not the same. And you know that by looking at how much products they buy. You know that if they're buying 50 PV per month, what are they doing? They're not really benefiting yet. They may be diffusing oils. So the, the ERO in Singapore is 100 PV, right? Okay, so if they're just buying, because in Hong Kong, it's, it's 50. So if they're just buying 100 PV and then they want to take like grace period or whatever, you know that something is not right. They're not really benefiting. They're probably just using oils and diffusing, they're probably not, or maybe they're just drinking Ningxia Red, then they can easily drop off. 100 is better. If 50 PV, they really drop off very easily. If they're 100 PV and they're struggling, then you know education. You have to educate them. You have to care about them first though. You can't call them and say, hey, what are you buying? How come you're like buying just 100 PV? And then, sorry, you're gonna lose that person. So you're gonna care about them, find out what they need, and then if you're looking at the person and they're buying like 250, 200, you know that they're drinking in charret, they're using oils. They're probably using supplements also. They're probably cleaning their house with, with thieves, right? Those are the people who stay. And I think that's really, really helpful if you are um, use the abundance tracker and find out your number, find out your average order per month, find out how many people are on ER, um, making sure that people that you sign up maintain and really benefit. Uh, I like to tell people to use a notebook and write down what everybody needs, where you meet them, uh, where you met them, where you where they need, what the family background is, like how many family, how many kids, um, international school or local school, because their schedule is different. And then write down what they need, right? Like sleep or the kids are sensitive or they're like overactive or whatever. And so every time when you reconnect with them, and I suggest reconnecting every month, not because you want to put them on ER, because you want to catch up. And it could just be like texting or making a call for like five minutes or something. It doesn't have to be something long. And I suggest reconnecting with new people, three, reconnecting with like three new people a day, like three new people, meaning sending up texting, hey, how are you? How are you coping with this COVID thing? Are you okay? Are you still at that job? Um, how are your kids? Is it okay with your husband? I don't know, just ask nice questions and show that you care about their family, their occupation and their recreation, okay? Um, so have a good system to follow up, use your notebooks, write down things. And the reason why I tell people to write down things about their people is so that they telepathically, energetically connect with that person. So this is the system that I've been teaching, right? I get everybody to get a notebook. You write down the 30 people that you want to reconnect with that are not Young Living members. 
okay? Somebody in your network from your old school, whatever, maybe people that you haven't seen in like 20 years. I mean, I recently reconnected with a bunch of my school friends whom I haven't seen in 30 years. And we still have that bond because we grew up together in school. And I haven't told them about Young Living yet because I've only seen them once or twice. And um, they all know that I do Young Living though. Um, and so do that and start writing it down, writing stuff down and looking them up in Facebook, start commenting on their Facebook posts, start liking their Facebook posts and then commenting on it and really knowing what's going on in their lives, right? And writing it on your notebook. So write down 30 people and then connect with them using different ways, texting, calling, Facebook messaging, commenting on the Facebook, and do three every day. So by day 10, you're done with all your 30 people and then loop back. By day 11, go back to the, your first three. How do you do the first three? In the morning, on your way to work, or in the morning, just somewhere, sometime in the morning, around lunchtime and before dinner or after dinner connect with three people, set yourself up with a schedule, and then you can follow the schedule, right? I know a lot of people don't like to follow schedules, but if you don't have a schedule, you never be, you never get to where you are. So I like to use this analogy. It's like, okay, so we can't travel, but imagine you're going to Japan and there are like 10 different places that you want to go visit and want to see and three restaurants. If you land, if you go to Japan without planning at all, no scheduling, no planning at all. You only know that there are 10 places you want to go. Are you going to be able to visit those 10, 10 places after five days? No, absolutely not, right? So you have to schedule, you have to plan, right? If you're going to five days, you have 10 places you want to visit, you're going to maybe put two in a day or you're going to put them together in their vicinity. You're going to plan out your trip. This day I'm going to go to this place, this way I'm going to go to this place. How am I going to get there? How long is it going to take me? right? So if you want to build this young living business, but you do not schedule yourself and you do not have a plan, are you ever going to get to your destination? No, you're never going to be there. Never. And the problem with most people is they imagine themselves doing the young living business, but they're not actioning on them. And the interesting thing is our subconscious mind cannot differentiate between reality and our imagination. Well, since we're doing a Facebook Live and it's in a private group, right? I would like to take um, maybe two minutes to do an experiment. And I, I'm just doing this, like I have not planned what to talk about. I'm just letting you know, the universe guide me. I would like to do a little experiment with all of you. How many people are watching, are online watching now? Like 30? Yeah, <clears throat> earlier, earlier on we had 30. So people popping in and out. Ooh. So at 30 and then we have like 16 here. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm, I'm guessing that everybody has oils on their desk, right? So everybody, whatever oil, take an oil, start rubbing it on, put it on your, um, on your palm, okay? Put it on your palm, I've got clarity here. And then cup your nose, close your eyes and inhale. That smells good. And keep your eyes closed. Inhale the second time and exhale. And then inhale the third time and relax your whole body. You're keeping your eyes closed. We're all now sitting and we imagine we get up. Imagine you're getting up of your chair and then you're walking towards your kitchen, keeping your eyes closed, you're walking towards your kitchen, and you see your refrigerator, you open the refrigerator door, and the cold air oozes out, and ooh, that feels good, and it's cold, and you see in the fruit door, you see a lemon, you open the, lem the door, my hand is getting colder, and I pull out the lemon. Ooh, the lemon is cold to the touch. My fingers are feeling very cold. I take out the lemon. I close the drawer. I close the refrigerator door, walk over to the counter, pull out a chopping board and pull out a knife. And you cut the lemon in half. 
and you see the juice coming out and you smell the lemon. You smell the lemon skin and you smell the lemon and you smell the juice. You pick up the lemon and then you put it close to your nose and you smell it. Ooh, that smells nice and cold and refreshing. And it smells sour and you stick out your tongue and you lick a lemon. Mmm, that's sour. Okay, open your eyes. Uh, with a show of hands or commenting in the comments, tell me whose mouth was saliving. <laughs> well, there was no lemon, sorry. And there was no refrigerator. It was all in your imagination. And our body do not and cannot differentiate between imagination and reality. And most people in Young Living, building a Young Living business stopped when they found challenges, when, when they have obstacles, when people roll their eyes on them, when they tell them about essential oils or when they have people who don't support them and they stop, they think about it. They only think about it and they think it's a good idea. They start imagining that if I'm silver, I'm gonna get this income. If I'm diamond, I'm gonna get this income. And I'm talking about Young Living to people, but when they don't like it, I stop. And then five years later, they come and they tell me that, you know what, I've been building Young Living for five years and I am just senior star. I don't think this is ever gonna work for me. And that is the harsh reality, guys. And this is what actually happens. I know because it happens. I've seen it multiple times. I've seen it in so many people. So stop imagining it. Go to the refrigerator and get your lemon, right? You gotta walk to the refrigerator, open the door and get your lemon and cut it out. And it's hard work, but it's worth it. And that's really what I really, really want everybody to remember is that you, you can't just sit there and imagine and think about doing it and not action, right? Okay, so, and another thing is, um, how do you get people who have money, who do not need the money to keep building, right? And most of the time, it's not about money. As I said just now, if you're looking for money, Young Living is not the place for you, quick money. But if you're looking for self-esteem, if you're looking for self-worth, if you're looking for self-growth, you wanna become a better person, Young Living is the place for you. If you want to become a better person in five years, in 10 years, Young Living is the place for you. If you wanna become healthier, if you wanna influence your community, if you wanna change the world, then Young Living is the place for you but it's not the place to find, to earn a fast buck. And if you consistently work here, consistently help people, consistently tell people how Young Living is gonna change their lives and share, regardless of what other people tell you, the money will be very good. But it's not now, it's gonna be in a few years. And some people say, wow, in five years, in 10 years? Yeah, in five and 10 years. Let me ask you, if you work a job, like as Mary liked to say, a J-O-B, how often do you get a raise? How often do you get a raise that is going to double your income, that is going to triple your income? And I can tell you that my income has increased by 40 times since I first started, or 50, sometimes 60, depends. On a good month, it's like increased by 60 times. Where can I find a J-O-B that does that? I can't think of one. And, um, and I built this, well, a lot of people say that, well, you build it because you build a new market. Yeah, I built a new market that nobody was using Young Living, but uh, I also had a lot of obstacles. So I don't know, you can look at it as easy to build a new market because nobody has ever heard of it. Or you can look at it as very difficult because nobody has ever heard of it. it depends on how you look at it, right? So there are people who tell me now, well, it's so actually so much easier to build now that everybody knows what Young Living is. And then there's the people who tell me that, well, it's really difficult now because everybody I know is already using Young Living. I don't know. It's really up to you how you want to look at it. I look at it as, well, it was easier because nobody knew about Young Living and nobody knows what it was and everybody thought I was crazy. And it was also really easy because we couldn't get stuff in and we were out of stock all the time. There were times when we were only out, we only had like 10% of our stock in. 
But you can also look at it that, well, now there's so many people who know about Young Living. I find it easier to build now because all my friends, when they think of Young Living, they think of me. <laughs> and they'll call me and they'll go, hey, I heard that there's this bloom collagen thing and I want to try. They go, oh, okay, we've got the starter kit. You want to try the other kit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't even have to explain to them what Young Living is, what essential oil is, why I love essential oils, why it changed my life, how it changed my life, how I can be 50. And you know what? Recently, I had three pieces of gray hair and I got so upset and I made a post on Facebook and I said, I'm so upset. I finally got three pieces of uh, gray hair after my 50th birthday because I'm writing this builder's course. And everybody just laughed. Right. They said, well, this is like a, a hurting point, a sad point for you, because you've got three gray hair when you're 50. And all of us are like, how does she only get three gray hair when she's 50? We're getting gray hair when we're 32. What is she doing? I said, because I'm young living. Because I drink Ningxia Red and I take Sulfur Syme and I take all this supplement and I have my oils. Really? Yeah, really. Why does she not have wrinkles? Is she really 50? Yeah, you want to see my ID card? Because I've got Bloom, and I've got skin scare, uh, Dry Skin Serum, and I've got Beauty Serum. I've got all these amazing things. I've got Sandalwood. And, you know, that's who I am, and that's who you need to become. Right? People want what you have. Then they will think of you when they want something. Right? And so let me go back to... Um, about building this business consistently, even if you don't need the money. Those are actually the best people to build a young living business because they don't need the money. <laughs> because they want self-growth. They want to become a better person. They want to be a good role model for the community because they want to help people, because they want to be a good role model to their children. Because, and I think that, um, for moms, and I think there's a lot of moms in Singapore who are members, I think they are really, really good to as builders because a lot of the times um, they've got kids and they're busy with the kids. And then when the kids are like in their teens, they become sort of obsolete, right? <laughs> the mother becomes obsolete because the kids now have their own friends. They have their own, own social circle. The mom is sort of like a provider at home. And... I love stay home moms. That was what I wanted to do in my entire life. That was like my goal in my life was to be a stay home mom and take care of my kids at home. Um, but when I decided to jump into the young living business thing was because I wanted to show my children that when a mother finds something that they're passionate about, we're gonna be met with challenges and I wanna show them how I overcome my challenges how I overcome things that I did not want to do and I still had to do them. And how when I have my challenges, I cry sitting in front of my computer in the middle of the night and still did it. I still do it the next morning at six o'clock. I still climb out of bed and keep doing it. And I wanted to role model this to them. And I see that I can see it in them that now with the subjects that they don't really like, they still push through it. They still do their best. And with the subjects that they really love at school, they would give their best and do their all, which is something that I love for kids. And, um, and another thing is, this is definitely a personal growth journey in Young Living. And I know Kai has probably heard of this and she probably have told all of you is that your organization can only be as big as you. And that actually means that if your heart, as big as your heart is, your organization is going to be as big. So it's about growing ourselves. It's about growing our heart. Um, and people that, and I have seen that people who have not actually grown, even if they've made a rank, they will drop rank. So for everybody who, who is on the call, who has dropped rank, I would really advise you to go look in yourself and see what have you not grown. Because when you've growth, you will become that rank again. And uh, that is, I think, something that is way more than money. It's something that money cannot buy. And I can attest to you that, and I think if you go around and ask anyone in Young Living who has built to diamond or platinum, they would have to agree that it's a personal growth journey. And with every obstacle, 
with me, when I was building the business, with every obstacle, I realized that once I've overcome it, I become a better person, I become smarter, I'm more intelligent, I'm more resilient, and I'm just better, you know? And there were times when I realized that, and I just went out and look for problems to solve. Because I realized that every time I overcome a challenge, my organization grow and my OGV grow. And OGV is sort of, I think it's a number representation of how much your person, your, your personal journey has grown. It's a weird thing, but it is, um, especially for people who are in lower ranks, for platinums, diamonds. Um, well, I call that lower ranks because I'm an RCD, right? But in between when you're diamond and RCD, your OGV act, your OGV growth actually consists of a lot of builders in your team. And um, with, if you're after diamond, if you're between diamond and RCD, your leg growth, your weak leg growth, are the, are your qualifying leg growth is the direct correlation between your personal growth to the OGV in your qualifying leg growth. I don't know if you guys know what I mean. But before your diamond, your organization growth, is your personal growth, okay? I think Kai understands. For the rest of you who don't understand, it's okay. Just as long as you know that before your diamond, that's your personal growth, okay? And it's, I think it correlates actually, really it does, okay? And so that's is a really good gauge of how much you have grown. And so after I found that out, I actually went out and looked for challenges to overcome so that I can grow my organization. It was insane. And when you went out and look for challenges, they come head on. And when you're ready, it's fun. I have turned it, turned it into this little game for myself. And it's just crazy. I, I don't think I've ever told anybody is that I turned this into this little game. It was like, um, sort of like a snake and letter kind of thing, like a challenge game mentally for myself is that if I go out and look for challenge, if I jump over this hurdle and I solve it, let me turn around and see how much my OG grew. grow. And it, it was insane. And, and when I, and let's see if I jump over five, maybe I can make rank. If I jump over six, maybe I can make another rank. It, it was, it's just so much fun. If you turn it into a game, it's fun. If you went out and look for challenges and then when you overcome them, it's fun, it's, I'm serious. It is true, especially if you can't sign up that person who keep rolling your eyes. Like I have this story that I keep telling over and over again, is that when I first started building, I have this friend, like she's a, like a 20 year old friend, right? And she really believed me. She really, really believed in the products. She really, really believed in the oils. And because of our relationship, right? Because we've had rapport and her husband is a financial, is a CFO of a gigantic conglomerate company, obviously very, logic and very left-minded person and I remember one time we were in this dinner gathering and they were standing and chatting and I started walking towards them and the husband saw me from afar so he was standing here I still remember vividly he saw me walking and he start and he said oh my god she's coming and she's going to talk about her oils and she turned around and he turned around and he left the crowd okay his wife started using the oils in December. That was a Chinese New Year dinner. So around maybe February. His wife made diamond, no, made a silver a, a year later, I think a year, six months, something like that. And obviously back then she got a, a, the aroma complete. And after, during that year, somehow my friend managed to, you know, show the husband that the oils actually work. And he researched online and he bought from different companies and compared them interesting person right so he bought from like doTERRA he bought from like mountain rocky mountain he got the oils from young living from from his wife he obviously has done his research and he said young living do have the best oil and he started using them so a year later when she got the aroma complete i received a photo of him holding the aroma complete and putting stickers on so she he said he said to his wife let me put the sticker, let me help you put the stickers on. And my friend took a photo. And that was a moment of triumph. Right? And I know if you know exactly how it feels because you've got so many friends, husband doing this, right? 
And wasn't that a moment of triumph? I'm like, yes. And you know, time is only a concept for humans and it doesn't matter. And most people need to listen to a new thing seven times before they can say yes to it. So plant the seed and it's okay if you're not the seventh person because there are a lot of people in the world. Just be the person to plant the seed, the first seed or the third seed, or I don't know, the sixth seed. I don't know, maybe you went out and you're talking to enough people, you will be the person who plant the seventh seed, right? And I love how Richard Brooks talk about this. And if you, if I tell you with every person you talk to about Young Living, I'm gonna give you 500 bucks, you will do it, right? You're gonna go out and talk to whoever, like the person in the bus line, the person in the grocery store. And you think I'm crazy, but if you think of that, he did this math. If you do that every day, every day for a month and over a period of a year, you're gonna end up receiving 500 times 365 in commission. Um, because of your sign up rate. Let me let me do the math. Uh, so five, three, 500 times 365. Um, and that's in commission for 12 months. Yes, that's a silver commission for 12 months around. Okay, including keep signing up people. So if you consistently do that every day for 12 months, you're going to be silver. And you're going to have that income. And nobody thinks of it that way. Or 300 bucks or not something. You know, everybody has a different. Uh, 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 it's 500 for Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Hong Kong money. Everybody has a different exchange rate. So work that exchange rate out in Singaporean dollar. That's why you're not catching me because it's 500 Hong Kong. Maybe it's like 100. Can, uh, Singapore, I think, I don't know the exchange rate, right? If somebody tells you that if you go out every day and talk to one person, they're gonna give you a hundred bucks because usually the sign up rate, if you have a good relationship with them, it's for every 30 people you talk to, you can sign up about 10 and it takes about three months to build that rapport. So you guys might wanna write this down. So for, you know, that 30 people list that I, gave, I told you to write, if you talk to them for three months, 10 people out of that list will sign up. And if you keep adding to that 30 people list, so every month you've got 30 people, right? And eventually you're gonna be talking to like 90 people. And if your sign up rate is 10%, per, is 10 per, not, not 10%, I mean 30%, that's a regular sign up rate, 30%. You're gonna, if you talk to 90 people, you're gonna sign up 30, right? That's an average. My sign up rate was 60%. So for every 10 people that I talk to, I can sign up six people. It's also good to know your sign up rate so you can project how many people you can sign up and how many people you have to talk to. If your sign up rate is lower than 30%, there's something that you're not doing right. You're not building rapport, okay? And if you're like talking to 90 people and you're only signing up with one person, go, go to your upline and work on your communication skills or your rapport building skills, your people skills. And, and, and people skills are about communications, listening, body language, tone, making people how, like letting people know how, how they feel, like making sure you are creating the feeling that you want them to feel when you're talking to them and setting intentions, okay? So I like to use math. I know a lot of people aren't very good with math. And when we talk about math, uh, they feel very reserved because it feels like they're trying to chase numbers. But I look at it this way. I use this analogy. So I'm all about the analogy, right? I use this analogy. If you go to Google, if you go to Google map, and you enter a destination where you want to go to. Say, for example, if you're in Singapore, you write, I, I don't know, you have this convention center that I always go to. Say, for example, Grand Hyatt, you guys have a Grand Hyatt, right? And say you enter a Google map and then you write like Grand Hyatt and it shows you where it is. And does everybody know that Grand Hyatt, the name is actually represented by numbers? It's a location that is represented by a bunch of numbers, uh, altitude, latitude and something, right? That's what map does. 
but the algorithm, the program of the Google map has labeled this bunch of numbers with Grand Hyatt. You guys know that, right? Okay, some of you don't, okay. So la altitude and latitude, that's how every single place dot on the map is represented by, okay? It's the grid. And with every address, there's actually a number that represents it. What Google Map does is matches that number with the name, with Grand Hyatt, say for example, and your home with your building name. But it's a bunch of numbers. It's still a bunch of numbers, okay? So what you do is you take out Google Map and you enter Grand Hyatt, that's where I wanna go. And the map has a bunch of numbers that it, it input. And then it will ask you, enter current location, right? Otherwise, they won't be able to show you the route to go to Grand Hyatt from where you are. So you enter current location. You say, I don't know, the building that you're living in. And you enter, and it's actually the Google Map program will match it with a bunch of numbers that is actually your location. And then it comes out with the route, right? And with this route, when you follow this route, you know how to get to your destination, to the Grand Hyatt. However, these are actually all just numbers. And without entering your destination into the Google map, okay, let me rephrase that. Even if you only enter the destination of the Google map and you do not tell them where you are, it won't pop up the route, correct? In order to know how to get to your destination, you need to know where you are. And that's where numbers come in, because without the numbers, you won't know where you are. That's when number come in, in Young Living Business. You need to know your sign up rate, because so that you can project, if I want to sign up 10 people, how many people I have to talk to. If you want to sign up 100 people, how many people I have to talk to, right? And if you want... The OG fee, so say for example, silver is about, you're helping about a hundred people changing their lives. If your retention rate is 50%, then with every 200 people that you have in your team, a hundred people are using the products. The other hundred people, maybe they are not buying anything because they have not yet seen the value of the products because they don't want to take the money out of their pockets and exchange it with the products because they haven't seen the value. The people who are buying the products are seeing the value. So how do I let those people who are not buying the products, who do have young living in their home to see the value of the products? What do I do? It's not about you seeing the, prop, the value, it's about them seeing the value. Right. So with that, I'm actually throwing a lot of things in that two sentences. I'm throwing in retention rate. I'm throwing in sustainability. I'm throwing in connection. I'm throwing in finding out what people need. I'm throwing in value. OK. And all right. OK. So if you have 200 people in your organization and everybody and you have 50 percent retention rate and the average order PV is 100 PV, and that's when you make your silver, right? And you're changing about 100 people, 100 families. Well, your whole organization is changing about 100 families, potentially, if they continue to use the products and benefit from them. And what does this actually mean? A silver means that you're changing 100 people family. Silver equals to 100 families. Gold equals to 250 families. But if you don't use numbers to represent these families, Young Living don't know how to pay you. That is the whole purpose of the OGV, is so that they can pay you appropriately for your service, for changing people's lives. If they don't have the numbers, they don't know. You can't track. You don't know who's sharing. You don't know who's actually benefiting. If you're looking at your OGV, if they don't put 100 PV there, you don't know how they're benefiting. And honestly, the more products they're using, the more they're benefiting, the more value they see in these products, right? You can actually see that for anybody who is buying 400 PV a month, 
they are benefiting. You can, I can guarantee you that, well, unless they're going under the table and selling it online, but nobody's going to do that because they won't make money. Right? And they won't consistently do that because they won't make money. So that's not, that's not the point here. Okay? The whole point of Young Living is helping people and making sure that they benefit. And the rank, the OGV, is only a representation of how many families so that they can, well, in English, they call it compensate you properly. And I like to use the word reward or thank you properly for doing that because they know that the person who is buying the products, they wanna thank you, but you don't want them to be paying you, you know, because that's because Young Living does it already. You know what I mean? So that's what it is about. And that's why it's a personal growth journey about helping people, about helping yourself. And when we grow, everybody grows, right? And that's what duplicates, is this attitude of growth, this attitude of value, this attitude of seeing value, or uh, this attitude of adding value to yourself and adding people to your, adding value to the people in your team, whether it's on health, whether it's on personal growth, whether it's on money. And money by itself is neutral. It's not good or it's not bad. It's how you use it. Okay. Well, we are right <laughs> on time. <laughs> I know. It's, you know, okay. So before I comment on some things, um, anyone who's, whether you're in the Zoom room with us or you're on Facebook, um, if you have questions for Joanne about her building experiences, about anything in specific, please type it out so that we can, you know, channel it towards Joanne. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to organize your thoughts and put that down. Like, I realized that I forgot to actually mention one thing I remember about Joanne. And as she was talking about the farm, it actually just became so real in my mind because there was this one year, um, our team, One Droppers, actually went to Winter Harvest with Joanne's team. And <clears throat> many of you probably didn't know this scene that happened because we would, Joanne and I were taken to, I don't know, in a room somewhere. Was it with, was it with Corey? Yeah. No, was, no, it was the, oh, it was the oh, previous no, 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 guy. Yeah, it was not the Corey. principal. Yeah, the, the big guy. Yeah, so, so, so we went in the room because he wanted to talk to, well, we're obviously the gang leaders, right? So they brought us in because he wants to talk to us about the work schedule for the team. And then, so he said, so I, I want to find out from both of you, you know, what do you want us to show you guys when you're here at the farm? What do you want them to do? And before I can even start thinking, Joanne cut in and then she says, I want them to work so hard that they have the balsam fur chips in their panties every night when they go back. And I laughed. And he was, what? He was like, what? The chips must be in their panties because they've worked so hard. <laughs> that, that was her target. So she was just talking about goals, right? Where are we and where do we get to? Like she says, that's the measurement of hard work that they have balsam fur all over them and the chips are in their panties at night and they are, as they are lying there, they are dead exhausted. But it's so funny because, I mean, to me, I will always remember that that is um, how I remember how passionate she is about the farm. Because when we actually get so deep into working at the farm, we get our fingers dirty, we have chips in our panties because we've been digging at things the whole day long, we understand exactly what Joanne has said. This is not a company that's just here to sell a product. This is not your typical network business. So if you're not here for the bigger purpose of growth and you cannot see that, then you're going to hate those chips because they're going to irritate you. They're going to ride up your ass all the time. They're going to irritate you, right? So I had to say that story because I was like sitting there going, yeah, I remember her going like, chips in the panties. That's our tagline for you, our hashtag, chips in the panties. <laughs> okay, we, have, we do have questions coming in right now. Let me quickly, okay, it's on our chat here. So 
We have Grace Ling. You've met Grace Ling from Taiwan. How do you train your team and make it duplicate, duplicable with the simple way in Young Living business? One of the confrontations I'm facing is my people love always, however, they're overwhelmed with knowing if they want to do this business, they got to learn so much. That's a great question to start. Let's go. So learn so much as in products. No, you do not need to know all the products because I don't know all the products. Gary doesn't know all the products. He doesn't remember the names. He knows what they're useful. They know how, they, how they're being used, but he doesn't remember the names. I remember he was talking to us about the products and he would tell us, say something and Sherry at the back would go, no, 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 that's not what it's called. We call it the, 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 now. And Gary's like, oh, I don't know. I just formulate it, right? And so with the products, you don't need to know all of it. You don't need to know a lot. Just know what you have at home. Mm -hmm. And when you have people coming to ask you on products, if you don't know the answer, you say, oh, I don't know, let's find out. That is very powerful. Let's find out together. That is a very powerful answer. It shows people that you are willing to help them, you're willing to hold their hand and walk together with them, and you're there to help, and you're there to learn with them, okay? Or let me find out for you and get, I'll get back to you. That's like something that I say constantly is, oh, actually, I don't know. Let me find out, I'll get back to you. Or, and then I will like send them links and we'll learn together. And then I'll go, oh, you know what? I found this out, da, 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 da. Okay, that's about the products. So just know what you have at home and use those really, really well, okay? And then have obviously like have your own magic story, right? Magic moment story. And about the business, it takes time. Do it step-by-step. Step. I'm actually finally writing this program that, Eventually, I'm hoping to make it into English. So I've only taught like level one on it. It's basically what I just said in the past hour, but I've split it into like six classes going into details of each, each, each item. It's exactly what I said. So um, we need to know because the thing is people need to start signing people up, but most people actually have obstacles doing that already. So if you can't master signing people up, it's very difficult to build a business. If you have mastered signing people up, then you need to master retention. And those are the two key things that make your organization grow and sustain. I think just focus on those two things first because the rest, honestly, as Francis Fuller always says, would come naturally. But if you can't sign people up, if you can't retain them, if you can't, like if they're not on ER and you can't show them the value of the products, there's no point signing up a hundred people and let them drop off, really. So master those two first. Mm. Yeah, I hope that helps. Um, we have Adeline who asks, how do you split your time between educating your team and enrolling new ones? Scheduling, that's really important, scheduling. So um, very good question, scheduling. So what the kind of scheduling, what I mean is first is finding out what you actually, how you actually spend your time on. So for this first week, for example, I'm, I'm gonna start with like this week, right? Okay, from today is what, Thursday? No, Wednesday. So starting from today, I want you guys to do this. From today onwards until next Wednesday, write down in detailed time how you spend your day. So for example, now it's what, uh, uh, 10. So from 10 to, so tonight, you're gonna write down 10 to 11, Facebook Live, of uh, course learning, uh, 11 to 12, I don't know, you vacuum, 12 to one, you ate, one to one thirty, you traveled. So in very small details, write down how you spend your time in like half an hour slots, right? By the end of the day, you will have how you've spent your time for that whole day. Do the same thing for the next seven days. And on next Thursday, look through that list and see how you actually spent your time. Most people found out that they spent about a quarter of the time sleeping. So which is about eight, no, one third of the time sleeping, which is about eight hours. So you've got another 16 hours left. Most people spent about an hour in the bathroom in the morning, about two hours on Facebook scrolling, scrolling, not enrolling, scrolling two hours. And then it's like 12 noon, so they spend about half an hour prepping the meal, about an hour prepping the meal, and then about half an hour eating and then scrolling through Facebook or internet. That's five hours. 
And then you spent about half an hour spending, about an hour sending your kids to school, about an hour picking them up, about an hour doing something that is uneventful, and then spending about another two hours scrolling Facebook or searching for something online. And that go, there goes your 10 hours. You've got only what, five hours left? And, and then you spend another hour taking a shower. And then it's been about half an hour, three times half an hour pooping or going peeing. That's like 15 hours. And that's how most people spend their day. And so instead of doing that, you use that scrolling Facebook time to do something that's helpful. So after finding out how much time you actually have, um, a lot of people realize that they actually go marketing, like wet marketing, buying food, grocery shopping every day for about three hours because there's travel time, there's grocery shopping time and unpacking time. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing that every day, do it twice a week. Then you open up three more days morning to do other things, right? So scheduling that and intentionally setting appointments. Say for example, you wanna, so on Tuesday, and that's what I used to do, Tuesday and Wednesday, I meet people. So in the morning, lunchtime and afternoon. So I get to meet six people every week. And then Friday is me time day. So I'm, pre I'm prepared and rest, well rested for Saturday and Sunday where I spend time with my family. And then um, Monday and Thursday, maybe I cook, maybe I'll do some housework and then quality time with your children. Say every day quality time for your children, quality time meaning that or family meaning that you put your phone away, you plug it in and use something to cover it. That's what I had to do. I had to cover my phone while I was charging because every time when I walk by, I'd be curious and start looking at it. And before I know it, I've been spending like 45 minutes to an hour sitting there replying to messages, right? So I had to cover it out of sight, out of mind. And uh, then I really just spent quality one to two hours with my family mm -hmm. and playing or just watching TV or chatting and connecting. That's really, really important. So family time, two hours, meal time, an hour, right? Maybe watch TV time. I don't know. I need to watch TV for 45 minutes every day to unwind. Otherwise, my mind would keep like running. So that's like bedtime, an hour of, of TV time, which sometimes turn into an hour and a half, which sucks. Because <laughs> then I go to bed at like two. <laughs> and then, right? So so schedule it. So schedule like Monday, Thursday. That's what I used to do. And then Tuesday, Wednesday. Depends on how many how many days you want to work. Mm -hmm. And then your working time can, can, uh, uh, includes like connecting with people. So writing out people's names and connecting with them. Oh, I forgot something. The book, the 30 people book is like connecting with them. It's like tuning a radio. That's what I forgot to tell you. Remember how I talk about that 30 people book that you need to write out the list of people, the 30 people that you've never signed up. They're not Young Living members yet. And you need to look them up on Facebook or whatever and find out about them. This process of writing the information out is like tuning a radio frequency towards them. So you buy a radio home. Well, I'm sure all of you know what a radio is. <laughs> I'm sure all of you know. Uh, uh, when you buy a radio, when you turn it on, there's no channel, right? You got to tune, right? If you don't tune, the radio is useless. And by tuning that radio, you can listen to different radio stations. And that notebook of your 30 people, I call it your friend book, your 30 people friend book is tuning your frequency towards that person, aligning yourself with that person. How many people have tried, have experienced, have this experience is that you talk about a friend and then suddenly they show up in front of you. You talk about a friend or you think about a friend and you go out and you run into them in a supermarket or something, right? How many of that happened? Comment below Facebook, comment below and say yes, if you've had that happen to you. So that's what it is, is tuning your frequency towards that person. So writing that friend book is actually tuning your frequency. And it works. It's something that we can't really see and we cannot really measure, but that's how life works. That's the law of attraction. Okay. I think a lot of you believe that because it happened. It is true. So that's really important. So tuning your frequency. So after you've written out your 30, 30 people friend list, right? You started planning who you're gonna see, right? How many six people you're gonna see or nine? It doesn't matter. It, it, if you wanna be, you know, it still takes you to sign up about hundred people to make it to silver or at least a team. Or actually Richard did this interview with all the diamonds in Young Living. I think all of, he said the average of a diamond is signing up hundred to 200 people. 
And if you're signing up that many people, you will make rank. So if you want to do it fast, and I actually suggest doing it fast. I know that there are a lot of people who say, oh, you can take your time and do it slow and young living. I have been in this business for so long. I don't think that actually works because you have to ride with momentum. You have to ride the momentum. You have to ride yourself on that frequency and align yourself with that frequency and that mindset. And it's about doing it consistently compound effect, right? Like uh, look up the book compound effect if you've never heard of it. Uh, it's about compound effect. If you consistently do it two and then the next day becomes the, the effect becomes four, becomes 16. And if you do it two and then rest, the next time you do two, the result is just two. I don't even know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you got to consistently do it to ride, to create a wave and then ride the wave, right? But if you don't consistently do it every day, you don't create the wave, which you cannot ride and you don't create momentum. So since if you really want to do it, you might as well just sit down and write that 30 list and make sure that you connect with all these 30 people in the, in, in the whole month. Mm. Yeah. Actually really interesting because everything that you said just now goes to, still goes back to um, intentionality and the law of attraction because as you practice intentionality you're putting it out there so even that bit about um writing the 30 people you know like or looking at your schedule like because we actually don't know how our schedule looks like most of us just live through our life um, i've done that with a couple of uh, my members before as well and we actually sit down and look through what their time looks like and then realize that like you say exactly most of the time when we don't plan we are just wondering we are wondering on the internet space all the time and until you actually sit down and go like hey here's my schedule here's what i'm gonna do specifically for social media specifically for family etc then you draw yourself intentionally in that direction so love i totally agree with you totally agree with you and also schedule into me time that's really important schedule me time into it too yeah 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 so now we have a question from charlene who's in here in the zoom room um she she says that I feel that this business is about the people wanting to do the business. Many times, YL is the least of their priority. How do we work with people who want to build the business and not willing to put in the work or drop after they find that it's too hard? Well, you would first have to find out why they want to do it. Is it because of personal growth? Is it because of money? If they don't need the money, well, if they need the money, this is probably not the place. If they don't need the money, um, then it's about personal growth. What is it? Why do they want? Well, it's a good idea because I can help people. I really love the products. What is your goal? Help them find, set a goal first, right? Set them find, Help them find, set a goal. And the goal is most likely a rank. Take out the income disclosure, find out which rank they want to go to. Most likely it's platinum. Most likely they say diamond because it's a good idea but they don't know what it takes. Um, I think platinum is a realistic goal and uh, and then tell them what it actually means. Platinum, it's what, 100,000 100, OGV, which is what, 10,000 families, 1,000 families. It's 1,000 families, I think, 1,000 families. And that's not just you signing up 1,000 families. I don't think, I don't know if anybody's ever signed up 1,000 people. I'm sure in the US there are and in the Philippines, but. I don't know. I don't think we need to do that because it's a group effort. The best thing is find two more people to do it with her. Mm. I find that's really helpful accountability, keeping the energy going, keeping the excitement and scheduling. It's hard work and it depends what they want from it. So if they want money, then you, you need to let them know that the money is not going to come now, but it will come. It will come in about three, five years and mm. it's okay. Um, because say if she's like 40 or 30, five years is nothing. Because if you're working at JOB, you won't get that income anyway. So it's a really good choice, but it is on a timeline. So it is a five year or seven year project. Hmm. And make that very realistic. Let them know this is what they have signed up for and have them schedule their schedule and have them write, the, write out a, a friend list and tell them it's gonna be challenging, but tell them that every time they overcome a challenge, they're gonna become better. I think that's a really good motivation for a lot of people hmm. because if they're working, so I like to see this, I like to ask them, okay, how would you like people to see you in five years? What 
words would you like people to describe you? Like what, how would you like people, let, I, sorry, I said that in Chinese, but in English, how would you like people to describe you in five years? Write out a list of, 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 of descriptive words, like adjectives. Say, for example, in five years, I like people to see me as a successful woman. I like people to see that I care. They talk about, oh, she's very caring. She's very loving. She's very, I don't know, authentic. Um, I don't know, come up with a list of maybe five, three to five and work towards that, right? How do I work towards this? This will be my self image. This is how I want people to see me. And that's my goal. And how do I from now and in five years, how do I step by step? It's like crossing a river, right? I know I want to cross the river, but there's water running. So where do I find that stepping stone and put it in front of me and step on it and make sure that it's safe before I move forward to the next stone, right? So I know in five years, I want this income. I want people to describe me as this way. And I need, I, I have to share this with a thousand families. So if I can sign up a hundred people in the five, in the next five years, so that's like 900 people that are being signed up by other people. If everybody can sign up a hundred people, then I need to find 10 people to do this with me. Well, first of all, let's find three people to do this with me so that they can find their three people to do it, do it with them. And if you can find three people to do it with you in the next level, it's already nine. So that's already 27 people who are willing to do this with you. And the people don't have to come this month. The people may come in six months, but you got to first start working towards that goal first. You got to start walking that journey. Otherwise, it's sort of like going to Japan and not knowing where you want to go, but you have a list of 10 places you want to be, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one last question. This is uh, from Clarin, who's also in the group. I think she's still here. Yeah. Um, so I believe this is what she's trying to say. So you mentioned about self-growth and self-development, right? Mm -hmm. But this is self. So how does that apply back to the organization? This is an excellent question. Nobody's ever asked me this. It's <laughs> because everything in a network marketing business duplicates, whether you like it or not, whether you teach it or not. So I like to use this as an example, how you redeem your ER points, the mentality and the attitude towards your ER points duplicates. If you use your ER points to, to, to redeem Ningxia Red, which I hate, your, organized, your OGV is gonna drop because everybody is gonna somehow, don't know how they find out, don't know why this energy will spread out. They will all use the ER points to redeem Ningxia Red. And then on the month that they redeem Ningxia Red, your, or your, 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 your um, OGV drop by what? One, how, how much is it? How much, how many PV is it? Yeah, make sure, yeah, 100, 100. Depend, yeah, depending. Yeah, depending. Something, I think. So it's 89 PV for two bottles, right? Yeah. So that's like 160, 180 PV, I think. Mm. So if everybody redeems 100 PV worth of Ningxia Red, then your month, that month, everybody, can you imagine everybody buying 180 PV less from products? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to go there. Okay. <laughs> I don't even want to go there. Okay. So your attitude towards redeeming EL points. That's, that's why we always teach that using EL points to redeem something that you've never tried. It helps you open up your, your product list, the products that you use. And because Young Living products work, you're going to know, you're going to find out a new way, something else that can help you with your life, right? And that's the attitude that we want to demonstrate. That's the attitude that we want to duplicate. And that is how we want to look at Young Living. So when you are developing yourself and when you're growing, because the people in your team see that you're growing and when you're growing, you will want to share this. You want to share that, oh yeah, I'm learning this, I'm doing this. And when you're sharing, other people who are willing to grow will grow. Of course, there are going to be people who like to stay in their comfort zone. Mm. But there are also people who like to grow. Mm. And that's how it duplicates. I know 
it doesn't seem to be a very concrete answer, but that's actually how, how it happens. Because as you grow, you become a better person. You've got no, new knowledge. You're going to share your knowledge because Young Living is about sharing knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And then the people who are willing to listen and willing to learn and coachable, they will learn and they will grow and they will apply it in their lives. Yeah, I hope wow. that helps. I actually think that that was the perfect answer. Okay. <laughs> it was, it's very real. It's like, like we are always, no matter how much we tell people that they are still independent distributor, mm -hmm. that as they look up towards the, the hierarchy of the structure, whatsoever, and they're seeing you as the team leader. And they are always going to look at you and use you as a benchmark. If you have an attitude of, there's nothing much to learn, things are so difficult, then they are going to take that as the cue of what this business is about. So as mm -hmm. we are improving, we are also sending out that light and that signal that, look guys, this is a way, this is a possible way to go. And of course, everybody has a choice, right? They might choose to go. They will see that signboard and they go like, I'm going to follow those footsteps and do that. And sometimes people don't. But if we are not even a signboard or we are a bad signboard, <laughs> and then everybody's going to go in a completely different direction. Absolutely. So I love, I love that. Um, and I actually just want to end up say, revealing another little secret about Joanne. <laughs> to, it actually is really to appreciate who you are. Because, you know, for everyone who's tuning in or, or is tuning in later and listening to Joanne speak, I bet none of you would ever think that she thinks, she used to think that she's not smart and that she even thinks she's stupid. Like when I first heard her say that to me, like I have to keep my jaws up and go like, what are you talking about, Joanne? Um, but she is a product of exactly what she's talked about, that she has always decided ever since, you know, somehow I think the stars align and something just popped and she says, I'm going to learn, I'm going to do this. And she spent all her effort in becoming the best person. Like she's never let that stop. It was not just about teaching always. It was always about becoming the best version of herself. That her team starts to grow as well. And I always remember that conversation we had again in Winter Harvest. And Gretchen, if you're listening to this, this is about you too. Because I, I remember vaguely it was about Gretchen Gretchen's hitting diamond wreck. And we were, the three of us were walking through the cold and you talked about this, I think it was the previous month before we, that moment that Gretchen was that close. Um, and you had that conversation even with Gretchen about, and I, and about this hitting wreck. And I loved the perspective that you put into because you have always anchored it and repeatedly reminded your team that it is about growth. And that conversation, and even hearing Gretchen talk about it, it was like, is she ready for Diamond? Mm. You know, and does she want to really just invest herself in this? Because it wasn't about pushing for the PV to hit the rank. It was about, are you ready to be that person? That person that mirrors what this rank is about. Yeah. And yeah, so, so this whole personal development thing, one day I need to bring you back here and talk about it. <laughs> You are such a demonstration that, yeah, I can't, I, seriously, I can't believe it that you told me that you once started in a place where you didn't believe in yourself and then you thought that you were stupid. Um, and then look at who you have become. So thank you for sharing that piece with whoever is listening today and letting them know that it is possible and that we just need to choose to do this for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Joanne. Thank you for spending one and a half hours today with us. So at some point, yes, please remember, I'm going to drag you back here to talk about personal development. <laughs> so everyone, um, I think everyone has really tried to stay all the way to the end. And we're so appreciative of everything that, you know, stay safe and know that you are loved by us in Singapore. <laughs> 
Yep, everyone, thank you for tuning in today.